Welcome to the third episode of the MMA Experts Fight Cast. We have UFC 265 gone versus Lewis this weekend. Excited to talk about some of the fights on the card, specifically this main card. I am being joined by my good buddy Avery in the house. What is up, my brother? How you feeling today? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to get into it. Dude, I, I think we have... A pretty sweet main event. Unfortunately, losing what was an awesome fight between uh, Derek Lewis and Francis Ngannou, they went another direction. We have Cyril Gan as the opponent coming in as an undefeated contender. Let me get your lean on this matchup. What are your thoughts? You know, this is a fight between power versus precision. Derek Lewis, one of the few to have the touch of death along with Francis Ngannou. I mean, this guy is a complete killer. He is he can potentially beat Francis what I believe just because of that that uh touch of death. But I mean his like overall MMA game has just gotten better over time. He traditionally just started out as MMA, which is crazy, way later in life, but it's just a classic fight between power versus precision. Precision by Cyril Gan. This guy is just uh, from France, I believe the same camp where Francis and Ganu was from which originally. Is, originally, so that, that would be a cool matchup because of not really the potential beef because I don't think that they ever had issues. No, no, no. Um, but it would be you know the old teammates fighting off against one another. But we got to talk about this style matchup because yeah. you have Francis and Ganu, or excuse me, you have Cyril Gan, who. Frenchman, very good with the striking footwork, is off the charts. Some of the best movement in the heavyweight division, maybe of all time. Um, extremely light on his feet versus the touch of death, as you talked yeah. about with Derek Lewis. You know, I'm assuming this fight gets some rounds in. I don't think that it's a 30-second match. I think Gon controls most of this fight. Um, and I do think he personally is going to put away Derek Lewis in this matchup. I'm feeling like we're going to see Gon win by a stoppage against a tired Derek Lewis in the fourth round. What side do you want as far as the winner goes? As far as the winner, I would have to uh, roll with Surreal Gon. Me personally, I see it going to decision, surprisingly. Okay. I mean, the reason why I see that is... Surreal Gan, he does he can knock people out. I mean, Derek Lewis is still human. If you hit him on the button, it's he's gonna hit the deck. But I mean, Surreal Gan, he's so technical, but I don't feel like he's going for the uh, the knockout. He I you see think, him. So you're seeing the Rosenstroke fight again. Yeah, I you see that. that. Like might I, th be the I think he's just gonna go in. I mean, just he's gonna just try to like win on points. If he if he just ends up cracking him with a good shot, he he will probably go for the stoppage. But he's going to just try to play it safe. I think, honestly, that is his best bet. I mean, mm -hmm. but I can see him, Derek Lewis, getting a little restless, maybe a little frustrated that he can't really hit him. If he kind of bum rushes him. I mean, if they're training in the pocket, I'm always going to give it to Derek yes. Lewis. But Punching like, power wise. But Cyril Gone, he's so technical. He's, he, he might bait him out to do something unsafe and just crack him with a straight left or something. Yeah, I, I think that it's going to be. A victory for Gon, but not an easy one. It's a hard matchup at the end of the day to fight Derek Lewis, who's, you know, the one punch, the touch of death, the only guy on par with Francis and Ganu. Um, I really love the potential matchups on either side because Francis versus Derek Lewis, that would be an entertaining fight. Francis versus Gon, interesting style matchup. Yes. I feel like. We have to talk bets just a bit. We have okay. to talk potential bets. But the odds are ugly for this matchup. To be honest with you, um, they're definitely not giving us the best value of odds. And they have gone already. The bookmakers are on top of it. He's all the way up at a minus 400 favorite over at FanDuel wow. to the plus 300 dog high. Derek Lewis. That's widespread. That's extremely wide. I mean, I do have Cyril gone winning, but like... If I were how to like remake the odds, I mean personally, I'd have him like maybe minus two fifty. I could see that. What? I, I not see not that. not minus four hundred because I mean I still picking him, but I don't think like Derek Lewis is gonna put up a fight. Yeah. It's a not gonna be easy. A lot of people bet on Gan because yeah. I think a lot of people are sure this is our lock play of the week. We're going Cyril Gan, but the power of Lewis, there's so much you know interesting factors towards it. So we will talk a little bit prop bet, right? Derek okay. Lewis by KO TKO plus four fifty five. If you're a betting man and it's a Derek Lewis fight, you're probably thinking KO prop bet has value. It has worth. On the other side, gone to win by KO TKO is actually more the expected uh, result for him. He's at like plus 145, plus 150 for that. Gone to win by a decision, 
plus 185 up at plus 210 at best value. If I was going to prop bet it, I probably just won't prop it, but yeah. if I was, I'll lean towards gone inside the distance or by KO, TKO. But yeah, you're on the other side with decision. I'm on late KO. I think more of like a parlay edition fight. It's an exciting matchup in the heavyweight division, and I'm really pumped to see how it turns out. But we have to talk more than just the main event. Yes. We need to talk about the main card as a whole. We'll get to the co-main event. It's an intriguing fight. It's Jose Aldo Jr. versus Pedro Munoz. So this matchup here, Aldo has looked good at bantamweight. I actually think that it turned out to be a lot better of a move than most of us would have expected. Pedro Munoz on the other side, though. He looked ferocious against Jimmy Rivera. Those calf kicks. Killer. Off the charts. I'll let you uh, lead it off. What are your thoughts, man? Well, take me your take. What side you on? I mean, okay. So Pedro Munoz has been... Killing it lately. I mean, but I mean, Jose Aldo, like, I I agree with you. He's been looking great. I mean, he's been on the bad side of some decisions, whatever. But, like, he's fighting killers, man. I mean, I thought he was doing great against Peter Yan when they were fighting. I mean, I would say Gas Tank and Peter Yan just really overwhelmed them yeah. over time. But, like, it was a good, close fight. I mean, I mean, and Aldo coming off a win, I mean, I would say just a confidence win against Vera. But, I mean, there's two... Like elite kickboxers, I do say. I mean, that reach from Jose Auto will play a huge factor. I believe it's like a five five inch reach advantage, something like okay. that. I mean, but Munoz will come in with a lot of volume. He will throw those leg kicks. I mean, Jose Auto, I'd love for him to throw his leg kicks. He's been lessening up he's, a lot. Yeah, he's but been doing he does, it. He does torque him into you. Yeah, all those boxing too is going to be a factor in this fight because Munoz down to engage a bit too much personally for my liking. I like the leg kicks a lot. I like everything about Munoz's style, but he is at a side and speed disadvantage. So let me see. What, what's the pick? Who's the winner of this fight, and what's the method? For me, I think Jose Aldo. I mean, Pedro Munoz loves to throw those kicks. My only thing that I would say that really helps Aldo is that he, traditionally he's a fantastic Muay Thai fighter, one of the like probably best Muay Thai fighters in MMA. And he, I mean, I feel like he's just going to go in, Muay Thai stance, try to, like, check as many kicks as he possibly can. It's strong, good, like, just good boxing. I feel like he's going to be able to pull it out. I do think it's going to, I believe someone, I mean, uh, I want to say knockout just because yeah. it's cool. You, because you, I want to see, see it. It's going to be a scrap, but I would say I can see going to decision, just one bloodbath five-round battle. But I would say... Jose Aldo, fourth-round knockout. Jose Aldo, fourth-round knockout. Well, it is a three-round fight, my brother. Oh, my God. I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh. the, the, he's thinking it's a main event. Well, but listen, so Dude, if it was I'm a five-round fight, you're going Aldo by knockout. It's three rounds. If it's three rounds, I'm going to decision. Aldo decision. Let's go decision. My that's bad, funny, my bad, man. My bad. That's fine. No, no, it's all good, man. That, that's actually I got it, so hype. I was excited. like, yo, it's five rounds. I mean, it could be a free TV. You know why? Because main. I was thinking my co-main uh, – uh, Nunez versus Pena was a uh, title fight, and I was thinking, crud, dude. Still title fight. It's, dude, yeah. listen, I don't know I why I was, was thinking five. that. They should do five-round fights for, like, all the fights. I feel like it'd be a better option to have uh, five rounds for, like, if you're in the top four. Yeah. Even. Like, some co-main event should this be five rounds. I like how they do it. But we got to yeah. jump I'll take down a I'll bit take more. Um, real quick, I guess we will give you the odds. They're super close. And be cautious on this bet because, realistically, it's a very competitive matchup. Minus 120 to my, it's excuse, excuse me, plus 105, plus 105 tends to be the best value you can actually find uh, Pedro Munoz at, although minus 116 on the lower end, if I was betting, I'd go all though, but maybe fight goes the distance, prop bet would be the one there, uh, value for that sitting at Aldo to win by a decision plus 175 fight goes to decision minus 170 so value's not bad but let's get to yeah. the featured bout of the night it is Vicente Luque and Michael Chiesa let's talk a little bit about Vicente Luque because his game has definitely stepped up the Wonder Boy loss I believe turned out to be one of the best things for Vicente Luque's career he's looked fantastic striking destroyed Tyron Woodley defended all the takedowns in that matchup but now he takes on a tricky grappler a guy who's gonna look to chain wrestle you he's gonna look to clinch he's gonna look to get on top and control and he's controlled high level gr ground guys I mean if you look he beat up RDA fairly convincingly 
for me, I'll give my take first on this one for the winner. I know we talked about it a little bit before. It's one of those fights where there's arguments on both sides. That's why kind of the odds are pretty damn close here. Officially um, sitting slightly ahead to Kiesa plus 110, Luke minus 115. I'm going to go on the dog. I'm going to go with Kiesa decision. Okay. But I, I already know your take, but I want yeah. the people to hear it. So what's yours on this okay. one? Okay, so even though MMA experts here picked Kiesa, I'm picking Luke. Reason why, I mean, the past three fights, obvi- I mean, past, yeah, past three fights, um, Kiesa's been doing pretty great. He's been really controlling his opponents, but he's not been finishing them. He's always been controlling them on the ground, doing impressively. But I mean, like, if you're just going to kind of win and hold and just, like, for points, I mean, I guess that'll work. But, I mean, you're going to have to take uh, Luke down. And Are you, you not can't... a fan of the style of I'm not... Michael Chiesa? I mean, I like be honest, I mean, I like I like the grapple. You're I a like Kiesa hater. No, no. <laughs> you know what? You know what, buddy? Okay. So, I like the grappling. We even do jiu-jitsu, but I'm just even saying like Luke's striking he's going to I believe he would just piece up Kiesa. And I mean, uh Luke's best friend is freaking Gilbert Burns and Who's they've been and they've been training for I don't know how many years, but they're basically best friends, and you know they go hard in, tr- in the training room. So yeah. I, I would imagine his jujitsu. I mean, I mean, Tyron Woodley. He's not the, been the best lately, but he did choke him out. He, dude, he first he round. beat Woodley up bad, but that's that's I know that Woodley, that's a washed up Woodley. Take, that's take not the this, same Woodley. Take this down I'll, I'll give early that. to the people. That Woodley's gonna get knocked out by Jake Paul. Oh, I agree. <laughs> uh, it's it's sad. To I say, agree. But it's true. He, he's washed, but still, Luke wins yes. the fight. Fantastic. Three fight win streak. You have the side of Luke. What's the method of victory? How do I have Luke second round knockout? Second round knockout. If he sleeps Kiesa, that would be extremely impressive. I, I will agree 100%. Let's look at Kiesa's losses. Anthony Pettis and Kevin Lee, both submission losses. He did get TKO'd by a cut stoppage against Lozon back in the day. Extremely durable, and that's the reason I'm on Kiesa. But totally yeah. possible for Luke. He's an absolute savage striking. He definitely has a chance here, even though I'm on the Maverick, man. I, he's, he's on the UFC commercial. I don't think the I commercial know, curse can come into play yet, because if it does, then Gaethje might be on his way to an L2. So Sheesh. I'll ride Kiesa in the okay. house here, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see best happens. bet on that one, I would lean towards decision. Win for Kiesa. I don't think it's super likely he finishes Luke, especially with all the grappling experience. Kiesa to win by a decision plus two thirty five. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I like bad. that. Yeah, that, that's that's valuable. All right, but let's keep on moving and let's go to the Tisha Torres Angela Hill fight. This fight right here is really interesting. It's interesting. I probably a year ago. Would have been on the side of Angela Hill, but Torres came back with a vengeance in her past too. Yes. What do you like about Angela Hill? I mean, Angela Hill. I mean, she's been coming off. I mean, if she didn't two controversial losses to Michelle Waterson and Claudia Gedalia, um, could have went either way, depending on how you look at it. I mean, but if she did win those fights, she would have been on an enormous win streak. It would have been, yeah, you know, she would have been on fire. Unfortunately, controversial nods. It's not like she went out there and lost, you know, getting dominated. But yeah. her win against Yoder, I wasn't super impressed by. Even though she looked crispy, her striking looked really polished. Tisha Torres is the tiny tornado. Yes. She owns a win over her already. Of course. That's always a factor. That's always a number fights. one thing. If you lose to a fighter, it is hard to come back and now beat them. Tisha Torres, I believe, has the recipe of success for Angela Hill. Get inside the reach, mix it up with wild flurries, which she's known to do. Clinch her up, put her against the cage, control physically. Torres will be stronger. I'm going tiny tornado here, and I'm going tiny tornado by a decision. So I'm on Tisha. What about yourself, man? I would basically agree with you. Like I have, basically took the words out of my mouth. I mean, they don't call it the tiny tornado for a reason, for no reason. Excuse for no me. reason. For no reason. <laughs> for no reason. For no reason. For no reason. Excuse me. But like, like yeah, she, if she just keeps up the volume and overwhelms Angela Hill over three rounds, I mean, I, it's definitely gonna just be oh, an unanimous decision. I think the the tiny tornado for the victory. Angela Hill, she's also not really young for women's MMA either, bro. No. 36? Getting up there now. I'm not trying to hate on Angela Hill on the show here. I like Angela's style, but I don't see her beating this tiny tornado Tisha Torres, man. I agree. Uh, even though Torres is on a terrible losing streak for a bit, but she's turned it up. Good wins for her and lately. She may have the confidence because she has a dub over her. Yeah, I think that's her biggest attribute for victory in this matchup. So, yeah, Tisha Torres, odds-wise, we will do minus... 
Wow, minus 130 to plus 110. Best yeah. value you can find Hill at my, uh, plus 116. Not really going to be um, bad to straight bet, but women's MMA, I don't advise really throwing much money down on. It tends to be the most wild ball the fight game, especially um, these girls here. If you want to bet it, you could throw Torres, but I prefer fight goes the distance. That's minus 225 if you wanted to do that. What about yourself? You, you have any interest in a bet on this matchup? Um, so I'm not a betting man, so this is all for this guy here. Yeah, so he's he's saying no way. If we get him to bet on one, you know that's a true confident pick, man. We'll we'll, we'll get this guy betting eventually. Eventually, not now. Not yet, not yet. All right, we still got more, though. Yes. We have Yadong Song taking on Casey Kenny. So this fight right here intrigues me a lot because both – Hot prospects in the weight class, though Kenny's 30. Yeah. Tony Dong, man, he's young. He's, ch- he's like, what? 23? 30? Yeah, 23, dude. The world is his oyster. And stylistically speaking, I think he has a speed and power advantage, physically yes. strong. Grappling advantage, definitely the way of Kenny. Dong does train a team alpha male. And those boys know how to wrestle. They do. They can deal with takedowns. My lean on this one is going to be Yadong Song. Song Yadong. Tapology has it one way. UFC.com has it another It's Song Yadong. Song Yadong. I don't know why Tapology has it backwards, yeah. but it is what it is. I got him winning, man. And I got him winning by a decision. What about yourself? Give me your throw on that one. For me, I do agree. Uh, uh, not with okay, so not with the pick, yeah. but like I would agree that he, he has major power. That always that knockout potential. That right hand is killer. My goodness. But I mean, like I, uh, like I said, I disagree. He, I have Casey Kenny winning, I say, by decision. Um, I mean, I think the wrestling, I know he trains at Team Alpha Male, but I don't know. I mean, Casey Kenny, I mean, he, he went the distance with Dominic Cruz, so mm-hmm. his, his MMA skill overall, he's he's very skilled fighter. I mean, but I feel like the wrestling will get him over the hump just by, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he just kind of holds him there. So I don't think, think that, I don't think I don't think he wants to stand up with uh, Song Yudong. Like if they train the pocket, I just say Casey Kenny's gonna lose like every, every every single time. But you think it's gonna be a lot of grappling, a lot of grappling, a lot of grappling. I could see that. My worry is Casey Kenny is not your traditional wrestling style. Yeah, he's the judo background. It's hard to beat Yudong in that clinch, but. I want to see the fight. I'm excited to see it. I see why the odds are close. I see why you're on the side of Kenny. I feel like if he could just like uh, mess with his rhythm, mess with Song's uh, rhythm in the fight, I feel like he'll be able to pull it off. Yeah, and Casey also slight favorite, so people do agree. He's around minus 115. Uh, Song Yudong, you actually find him up at the plus 102 value at 5D, um, but he's sitting around minus 105, plus 100. Pretty good bet if you're looking to throw down on uh, Song Yudong value-wise, but yeah. obviously we have dual picks on the other side, so you know bet bet cautiously if you're throwing down on that one. I'm not touching the props there either. I think there's potential for the fight to go the distance, but I also think both have finishing ability. Overall, we got a pretty money pay-per-view card for the fans out there with UFC 265. Make sure you guys smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet. The video's not over just yet, not though. Yet. Uh, we do want to talk about some breaking MMA news. Let the people know what you know. Recently so, announced matchup. Breaking news, guys. So at 125, Cody Garbrandt is dropping down a weight class. He's going to fight Kai Kara France. Me, personally, like it can be a fun fight. But I really have Cody Garbrandt knocking Kai out, like probably second round. Yeah. Kai's, I mean, like Cody's too big for he's, for the weight class. I mean, he said he barely cut. He said he barely cuts weight for one thirty five. So this would be a legit, real weight cut. Weight cut. So he's dropping to one twenty five. That's twenty pounds. Ten pounds. Ten pounds. No, I mean like from like where he's starting from. Because uh, well, he's he start? Co- Cody Garbrandt says he like he he probably walks around like one forty. Oh, he only walks at one forty five. Like one forty five, one fifty. Like he not like he's he even admitted like he's not a big dude. That's that's so it's easy for him to make one thirty five. So much like, smarter to do one twenty five though, because the guys will be more his size. Yeah, Rob Font, you look at that matchup, totally outsized him. Against here, Kai Kara France is a good matchup, man, because Kai's nasty with his striking. He's very good at striking. Very, very good. But I feel like Cody, just him being too big, like once he gets hit by a couple times, he's going to feel the power. And you know what? Kai Kara France, his head is stationary at points. I think that something I pick up on it, and that's why you see him get caught once in a while. I think he's going to get slept. I think second round, I think it's a highlight real knockout. I believe this is great for Cody No Love's career. 
they rushed him up to fight Rob Font. Rob yeah. Font is Dude, just not is- a good fight for him. It's a terrible matchup. He loses that any time. Now, dropping a weight class, he can make a run. Maybe he wins that fight. Does he fight Brandon Moreno? That's a big fight. Dude, that would be a big fight. That could go either way for me. Yeah, like me fight. personally, that can go either way. Yeah, I think it's the right move for Cody No Love. The issue is with the bantamweight, or excuse me, with flyweight division, it's just there's not superstars there. Nobody oh. that really stands out. I love the weight class because the technical skill set is extremely high. There's a lot of good guys but it doesn't have the name value. Askar Askarov is emerging, you know, yeah. towards the top, but I don't does that sell a pay-per-view? The flyweight division is not going to be able to sell the pay-per-views um at all. I think it's going to be under as a co-main event thing, but a guy like Cody Garbrandt, maybe you can main event a flyweight fight now. You probably can. I mean, like you got Moreno, you have Cody dropping down right. if he really wants to stay there, and then you have like Figueredo. Oh, always more. But I mean, I don't know, Figueredo that weight cut has been killing him. I don't know if he yeah. wants to keep fighting at 125. I don't think, but he I don't feel like he would be. Yeah, me neither. I, I don't think he's even. What's? Let's look up the bantamweight rankings real quick. I need to to see this. This is a little off topic, yeah, but curiosity for sure. Because if you look at the bantamweight top three, Aljo, he doesn't. There, there's no chance for um, Davison. Yeah, I, I don't think. Petr Jan, no, no. TJ Dillashaw, no. no. Corey Sanhagen, no. Rob Fon, no. Jose Aldo, no. Cody Garbrandt, that's a fight. Yeah. And Cody's dropping the weight class. Like, uh, And then I'm looking at everyone it. else under him. Like, no Frankie way. Edgar, maybe. maybe. But dude, Marlon looks old, maybe. But I don't know. I would, I would lean Marlon. Honestly, Mar- I would Marlon lean everybody. At- Sunsal Rivera. Marab Divashvili. You think that Mayor, he beats maybe. Marab? I don't know, man. I think I Marab's going to wrestle the hell out of him. I think if he moves up a weight class... He might find himself in that number 15 spot. Because 135 is yeah, scary. Yeah, because I'm like, man, if, even if he fights Cody Stamen, I would say that's a fight. That's a fight. That's One, a f- 125, it's a lot better for these guys. Yeah. Because if you look at everybody at 125, I think they have a lot of issues moving up a weight. Like, they're just, obviously, they're naturally smaller guys. It would take a special... Special 125 like you gotta up and be, be dual champ. Like you got to be like a jacked, freaking thick boy, muscle, muscle dude. Like uh, like Cody Stamen, he probably cuts like 20. That yeah. boy is big. He's but huge. Like, but like he can easily make 145, I would say. But like they can't, like you said, the 125ers, they, a lot of them don't are not built like that or mm-hmm. anything close to that. They can't go up a weight class. I mean, they could, but they're not putting themselves at like the best – to win yes i think i think it'd be it, when you get to the lower weight classes especially 25 to 35 like 10 pounds on a guy who's weighing in at 125 is a serious jump yeah. in weight i have no faith in davison figueredo up a weight class i think his best bet continue to fight at 25 maybe fight a number one contender fight try to earn that moreno fight overall man that's an exciting announcement though I i'm agree. pretty pumped to see it um another matchup we have to announce marvin vittori Taking on Paulo Costa. Oh yeah, I, I completely forgot that. Uh, what's that what's happened. the early lean there, man? Hey, Paulo Costa Vittori. I mean, like I have reason to be biased, and I think Paulo Costa sucks re- really bad. Dude, he, he. I don't think you. I don't know. He, I don't Romero. think. I'm I'm capping. I'm capping. Yeah, I get it. I'm capping. I get it though. The reason to no, but is like, real. I mean, I think this is close personally. Um, yeah. When I really think about it, I think it would be a close fight. Because Paul Costa, I mean, his technique's there, but it's nothing like it's ba- it's basic. But like he'll throw a lot of volume, and it's you, you get not you get touched, you get probably get knocked out. Yeah, and you know what? what? I feel like he did get destroyed by Adesanya. I know he got that was murdered. that was a bad L he took to Israel. And then and then Vittori, he just got Molly off for. Yeah, both. Neither guy uh, I see beating Izzy, but I would say the rematch, or excuse me, the match between one another has me intrigued. Oh, early lean. My God, I'm freaking leaning Paulo Costa by KO. I feel like I feel like Vittori's going to have a hard time out-wrestling him. Because Costa can wrestle, but yeah. my fear is Costa's gas. But I'll go Costa, KO, TKO. What about yourself? I'll probably have to agree with you. So you but I can see like, going the other way around, too. Just like... Like Vittori, he has good striking. Like it's fast, but he basically just only throws straight. Yeah, that's really all. Like it's it, there's not a lot of variety there. 
No, he's he's a basic, basic, basic striker. Very basic. Yeah. Paulo Costa has a hard striking style to deal with for a lot of guys. I think that Israel Adesanya also had his best performance. I think Adesanya was so good that fight. He didn't look nearly as good in other matches. He looked good, don't get me wrong, but he hasn't looked like that level yeah, of I insanity. Agree. I think Costa beats Vittori. You know what? I think that Costa is going to be a lot of guys at 185. Will he emerge as a title challenger once again? What's your early bet on it? Yes or no? As an early title, title think, challenger? Not after one win, but do you oh. think he'll eventually challenge for a belt again? Uh, challenge for a belt? I mean, I would say he, I would say he can challenge for the belt, but I don't think when Izzy is there. I okay. think Izzy will eventually go up to 205 and like do like a John Jones thing and just take a year off. But like I can see if someone else, like if Robert Whitaker was champ, that's I could definitely fight. that's a great fight. Yeah, but I, I but as Izzy champ, no, I don't see it. It's a hard sell rematch, but don't be surprised if the UFC somehow tried to pull that off because I feel like that fight would still be marketable the rematch but like a couple years down the line we need costa to get yeah, you got three wins he's got a he's got a build up yeah and he's gonna he, he i think he's gonna emerge back man i, I think costa still got something you know maybe i'm a uh, too hardcore on costa but i think he's better than his performance and i'm excited to see what the future holds um what are some other like wild matchups coming up the nick diaz robbie lawler yes. one what about Nick Diaz? Do you think that it's going to be fantasy fights? Like, or excuse me, fun fights? Or do you think that he's actually going to, you know, be fighting Masvidal if he beats Robbie? Um, dude, if, I mean, I would kind of see Jorge Nick fight as like a fun fight. That'd be a dream fight. Dude, that's like, you could totally sell. It's a, it's a BMF fight. That's you a bad motherfucker fight. He's avenging his brother, bro. It's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. <laughs> it's a movie, it's man. A movie. It's I a would D like to see it. The Diaz movie. This is, that's definitely a possibility. But, dude, there's so many topics we can talk about in the fight game right now. We could be here all day. I know, it's so fun. We could talk I about Kobe Covington's conversation. Uh, com oh. oh, we could talk about the, no, that's another podcast. Well, well, what do you want to say? say I, was gonna talk, no, I, was, I was like, let's talk about the Kobe Uzman fight. But no, uh, that's we'll, another we'll day. Br we'll briefly talk about okay. it since, since you brought it up before we sign out. Early lean, late night early lean right here. We're going for Kamaru Usman. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that. Team Usman, dude. It's going to be hard for him to win. But that's pretty much it for this podcast. I do want to wrap it up. Yes. Bro, I appreciate you joining the Thank show you. once again, Avery. It was a lot of fun being here. Did you have a good time, man? Dude, I had a fun time. I'm, asking, I'm stumbling over with my words and forgetting stuff. But <laughs> I'm having a great time. This is fun, man. Listen, guys. Let us know uh, what you thought of the fight cast. Hopefully, you enjoyed my boy Avery in the house. He's getting the hang of being on camera. We love having him here. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new here too. And I will see you all in the next video.